from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering OSI Soft, Pi World 2018. Brought to you by OSI Soft. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the OC Soft show. It's called PI World. It's been going on for over 15 years. We've never been here before. We're excited to be here. Really is coming at it from um, the operations point of view and they've been worrying about operations and operations efficiency for years. There's people walking around with 15 year pins, which is pretty amazing. I got my first one year pin, so that's good. So we're excited to be here and dive into the details because we've talked a lot about IoT and industrial IoT and kind of coming at it from the IT side, but these guys have been working at it from the OT side for years and years and years, uh, almost 40 years. So our first guest uh, is joining us. He's Remy Duquette, the Global Head Applied AI and Data Center Clarity Lifecycle. It's a mouthful for Maya Heat Transfer Technologies. Remy, nice to meet you. Very nice meeting you. Thank so you for having me. Give us a little bit more detail on what Maya Heat Transfer is all about and then we'll dive into some of the specific stuff you're working on. So Maya Heat Transfer started you know, about 28 years ago in the simulation in, of heat and getting rid of, of all that heat that's being uh, you know, emitted by a lot of uh, data centers, right. you know, the, all the servers and the density that's uh, occurring these days. And we've evolved into um, yeah, just developing a software solution, leveraging the, the Pi infrastructure for real-time monitoring, and then extended it beyond for forecasting and, and doing all sorts of, of uh, you know, advanced analytics uh, from that data. Right, so heat is the historical enemy of electronics and has been forever. Yes, um, continuing and, to be so, and for continuing sure. Continuing to be yeah. so. And the data centers, you know, it's an interesting evolution in the data center space because on one hand, uh, they're consolidating data centers, they're shutting down data centers, you've got this public cloud phenomenon. On the other hand, it's density, 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 which probably is a good opportunity for you guys. A great opportunity. Unfortunately, you know, the problems uh, kind of are, are accentuated by exactly those, those phenomenon of consolidation and, and the cloud and you know, the virtualization projects that are going on. So all of that combined makes for a really big cocktail of, of heat uh, and, and uh, that heat needs to be dissipated somehow. Uh, and the, uh, of course, the energy efficiency of all the machines are getting better and better. But at some point, um, you know, it needs to be optimized, right. and that's where the software components to remove the you know the human in the loop, uh, really to optimize that that heat uh, distribution and, and removal. Yeah. So, what are the big themes here at this show? Is finding an efficiency, this kind of continual um, um, quest for better efficiency and using data. Uh, and big data specifically, and mm -hmm. sensor data to, to be able to get that, uh, find the inefficiency and act on the inefficiency. So what are some of the things that you guys look at? You've been at it for a long time, but there's still more opportunities to find inefficiencies. Where are you still finding inefficiencies? Oh, well, I mean, the main aspect is we, we have uh, a lot of uh, building automation systems and cooling loop systems that have been programmed, right, to, to try and, and uh, get to the best uh, situation, you know, in, or in any circumstances, and and really, when you look at uh, what we're doing now, is is applying uh, artificial intelligence to to you know augment uh, the abilities of those systems. Uh, to, to better control and get to even a better place from a, an energy efficiency perspective. So that's really the, the latest kind of evolution to use that big data, to learn from that data, and then opt, further optimize your, you know, your cooling environment and your heat distribution. Right. Yeah. I'm curious what kind of new learnings came out of kind of the hyperscale players. So obviously, the big public cloud players, Amazon and, and Azure, uh, Google Cloud have giant data centers, not only for their own core businesses, mm -hmm. but now they're building them out as public clouds. A much bigger scale than the traditional corporate data centers. They're just operating at a whole different level. Oh, a whole level. new, so, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> what are, what are the, some of the things that, that have come out of those experiences that are different than the world kind of pre public cloud? Well, if you look at the pre-public, uh, you know, private cloud and public cloud, uh, you had maybe on average, you know, five to six kilowatt per, per rack in a data center was the average, you know, power consumed by those racks. Now we're looking, you know, uh, when, uh, you know some of our clients um, have up to 50 kilowatt per rack, and, and now you need you know water cooled elements into that rack or, or other cooling elements that are being you know kind of uh, ex uh, helping the situation because those kinds of densities are producing a huge amount of heat, and and that's really you know a, a big big concern and a big uh, big shift from right. the you know the enterprise level data center that 
was a little bit less uh, of a of a consumer of that power. Right yeah. now, are you guys? Do you guys do anything outside of the data center? I know that's your mm -hmm. area of specialty, but we've been doing a lot of autonomous vehicle shows, and one of the things that comes up over and over and over is kind of the harsh environment for compute in a car or a truck or a mm -hmm. bus or whatever. It's not a beautifully controlled with a lot of great backup power and diesel and air conditioning, very rough environment. So what mm -hmm. are some of the, the applications that you guys can use to help uh, get that compute power in these vehicles? Well, it's a, actually uh, the evolution for us more on the software side uh, was to apply our uh, deep learning, uh, you know, artificial intelligence um, uh, components and agents to other industries. Uh, so we're leveraging the, the forecasting capabilities of these deep learning agents to uh, apply to other uh, areas. So discrete manufacturing was one example, fleet optimization. So to go back to those edge devices. Right. So we do a lot of fleet optimization, fuel optimization on, on these, uh, these components. Right. And that's completely outside the data center, but it's based on the same type of, of deep learning technologies that we've developed right. uh, for, for the data center. And all the forecasts are, you know, as more and more the compute and the store moves out to the edge and you've got all the industrial devices running around in the sensors, it's not new news for the group at this uh, organization. No, but clearly. <laughs> but, 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 you know, you're kind of shifting that load of the heat management from the data center out to the edge. To the edge, correct. So it does relieve a little bit of the, let's call it the, the pressure inside the data center, uh, but at the end uh, of the day, the the, the density of, of the, those uh, you know those cloud providers is just being accentuated by the sheer number of devices. So we thought there might be a shift towards the edge from a you know a power let's say a, a removal from the core data center, but in the end, it's actually the opposite that's happening. It's it the power is really getting denser and denser inside the, the data center inside itself. The data center. So last question before I get let, let you go, kind of what's your take on the vibe of the show? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's happening here at, at, at Pi World, it's, it's amazing, you know, kind of the international flavor as I'm walking around the halls, I'm seeing badges and hearing all kinds of uh, languages. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty hardcore industrial internet happening right here. Oh yeah, I mean, the operational technologies uh, and the, the various applications and, and, you know, industries in which Pi is is, is used and leveraged worldwide is, is phenomenal. And and it's it's a very vibrant uh, show and, you know, it's, it's actually quite good um, when it comes down to it. A lot of people, the exchange between the end users, uh, you know, together from different uh, industries share their, you know, tips and tricks on on how they've deployed. You know, their uh, their various uh, uh, stories are just amazing. So, yep. a great, great, great Pi World uh, conference for sure. All right, yeah. good. Well, thank you for taking a few minutes and sitting down and sharing uh, the Maya story with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, he's Remy. I'm Jeff. We are at OCSoft Pi World uh, 2018 in downtown San Francisco. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching.